Hey everyone and welcome to a brand new episode in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber featuring the one and only Golden R6. I haven't worked on this bike nor have I ridden this bike in almost a year or maybe more than a year but that is about to change. We're going to be doing a full service of the bike, we're going to be doing maintenance on the bike and we're going to be installing a shit ton of mods mostly from uh, that steel rack has a bunch of mods on there that we're going to be installing onto the bike. We have other mods that are coming this week. And we also have some custom mods that are going to be coming in like a month or two, which is the amount of time that I believe I'll be working on this bike due to laziness. But before I go over everything um, with the R6, we got Broly in the background and Nimbus. Different episodes for them. We're going to now focus just on the R6 exclusively because that's how much work needs to be done on her. Before we begin that stuff though, and I go over all the updates and things like that, I do wanna say, new camera, 4K camera, borrowing it from a friend, got the wrong lens, which is like super zoomed in by the way, so I'm standing literally on the other side of the garage, but it is what it is, we'll get the right one, and we will learn this camera. So, just wanna let you guys know, and now let's go over everything. Huge shout out to Abastance. We're gonna be using this uh, lift for basically the entire maintenance, servicing, installing all the mods. I eventually do wanna get those normal lifts, uh, those motorcycle lifts that you just put your bike on and then has like a little platform, makes it easier uh, to do oil changes and like anything else because the bike's actually propped up and has like a ground it's sitting on instead of just being lifted into the air. But this stand is actually gonna come in clutch um, because we have places that we need to get into and with the bike in a wheelie position or a stoppy position and makes it easier to get to certain parts of the underside of the bike. So that's gonna be really, really helpful. So first thing let's talk about is uh, all the fairings. So most of the fairings are off the bike sitting right here and pretty and dirty. As you guys can see the bike, you see all that dusty stuff, those handprints? I actually kind of slid my fingers on it to show you how dusty the bike is. Uh, the gold chrome wrap has been on the bike for about almost five years. Whenever I made that video to unveil the bike, that's when I actually literally finished wrapping the bike. So the goal is to rewrap the bike in gold chrome and this time have it done by like a professional. Because if you see certain parts of the bike, it is not done so professionally. On camera, you can't really see it because like I'm far away, I'm never like zoomed in that close. But usually if you are in person, you'll see all the places that I made mistakes and kind of like cut corners and double, triple stack wrap to cover um, fat air bubble right there. Uh, different places where I like put twice wrap, like right here. You see that little line over there? That's actually a wrap over the wrap covering a blemish. Um, so I do want to rewrap the bike, but that's going to be done professionally later on. I first feel like these two bikes need to get wrapped in powder coated wheels and all that stuff before I start reworking on a bike that already has a wrap. So fairings are off, all, everything's going to get deep clean and that's also where Avastan's going to come in clutch. Put the bike in a wheelie position, a stoppy position and being able to clean like the real insides of the bike and really get, be, able, be able to get into those parts easily. The gas tank. Gas tank is off. All the old gasoline has been drained out. I put a little tube where the uh, gas kind of leaks out. Put a little clear tube sucked up over there so the air can get out. Um, literally all the old gas has been out. There should be like very little drips in there. Also propped it up on foam so this is a very important part of the fuel pump or whatever. Uh, you're not supposed to put it against a hard surface, so we just have it lifted up and it's perfectly secure. So keeping styrofoam stuff actually helps out a lot. Now onto the bike itself. I still need to remove this. I'm going to be removing it. I needed to order. These are Japanese screws, so you have to use a JIS head or a JIS screwdriver. I ordered a bit for that, so that came in so we can actually... I've never ever used it. I use, I use normal screwdrivers and I really messed up the uh, thread in there or the, the cap or the... The whole thing, yes, is all messed up. So this time I actually got the JIS one so we can do it correctly. We have the LED lithium, not LED, lithium battery that's unplugged. I unplugged it back when I, um, like a year ago or something. It has perfectly good charge. As long as you unplug it, the shelf life is like, I want to say like 10 years, 100 years or something crazy like that. Back here, you see these two little plugs right here. They connect into the ECU, the electronic computer unit control unit or something like that. That has been taken off the bike and sent out to get flashed because we're gonna be doing some performance mods on the bike. And for that, you need to get the ECU flashed. And there's so many things that the ECU is gonna be, once it's flashed, 
um, all a little cool, like the limiters are going to be off the bike. Um, the temperature, the fans are going to come on much earlier than um, OEM. A lot of warning signs will be off stuff, like we're going to be removing the servo, which is down here right there we're gonna be removing that that's gonna send in a lot of error signals and error codes instead of using an eliminator like a special harness you have to use to plug it in we just remove those warnings um, within the flashing of the ECU so once the ECU is flashed and back to us and we're actually on the bike then I'll tell you guys more of exactly what we got flashed and done on the ECU right here is the uh, quick shifter auto blipper thingy so we got one component right there another one's right here all those wires connect into the uh, the ignition coil thingy. We have the auto blipper shifter thingy right there as well. I forgot all the terminology, man, it's been a while. We have it installed, it works. I just need to tweak it because sometimes I'm down shifting into first and if the RPM is even what it's supposed to be, it doesn't shift down and I have to manually do it, which is fine, but it needs to do what it's supposed to do, which is shift up shift and down shift in the correct RPM super easily. So there are a lot of wires. So we've got to tweak that. I got to understand how to tweak that. Also, this right here is a fuel pump stuff uh, that stuff connects into the fuel tank. Um, back there, these wires right here are for the translogger, the quick shifter auto blipper. There's a brown one here. This is for the fuel pump or the fuel injector or something. Um, we also have, like, there's a brown wire in there somewhere. This red thing right here in the background, you guys see? If you just think of goddamn focus. That right there is for the um, Heel Tech uh, gear indicator. We need to get all these cables, um, cut the zip ties, and actually organize them and have, like, a good flow going on. And I actually also have these little um, spiral cable wraps that I would like to use and actually put them somewhere inside the bike. Places that we actually have space, since the fuel tank sits right here, right, I have a lot of space, but I actually do want to organize everything a lot better. So in case, like right now, if I do want to work on the bike or say if you go down, it'll be easier to work on the bike if I know what cable is aftermarket cables and what cables, what those aftermarket cables are. This right here is how dirty the brake fluid is. It's supposed to be a much lighter color, but you can see it's super, super dark. And like looks like something I want to say, but I can't. If you guys ever watched that video of Mayweather acting like he's about to drink his own um, bodily fluids, that's exactly what it looks like. So that brake fluid needs to be bled out. Um, that's the front and that's going to be bled out. The rear is going to be bled out. We are actually ordering some steel braided uh, brake lines because... So if you guys can see this right here is the OEM brake line. Those are rubber. Um, steel braided brake lines are a lot better. This are, those are OEM uh, brake lines right there and those are garbage. So we are going to be putting in some steel braided ones, custom ones. So those are still coming. I haven't gotten those yet. Those are going to be coming. So we are going to be removing the brake pads, which we, are, we still have the OEM brake pads. So we need to get some new brake pads. Those are also coming in the mail, if you can focus. We're gonna be cleaning the rotors. We're gonna be cleaning the brake, uh, the brake disc or whatever. We're gonna be removing the calipers, cleaning all of that out as well. And then I need to get like a scissor tool to cut this extra part off. Cause this is, for the OEM, this little gap right here is because the OEM rear reservoir was big enough where it took up that space. But now the aftermarket one is much smaller. So I need to cut that excess off of there because it bothers the hell out of me. So all the, uh, the brake fluid is gonna be removed, bled out. We're gonna be putting new brake lines in. We're gonna be putting new brake pads in the front. So that's two pairs in the front, one pair in the back. I also removed the sprocket cover. Let me wheel myself here. I also removed the, uh, the sprocket cover right here. So you can tell how clean that is. I thought it was gonna be a lot more gunkier, but it is, it is kind of dirty, like inside it's kind of dirty, but took that off, cleaned it. I thought they make um, aftermarket sprocket covers for the R6, but they don't. They make it for Ducati and they make it for BMW. They don't They don't really make it for, uh, for Yamaha. The only thing that I've actually done to this bike right now is I've drained all the oil. Um, that is a new oil filter, but uh, the bike currently doesn't have oil. We're gonna be getting to that. This is the stator cover. Um, if you guys can look closely and see the blemishes on the cover itself, if you guys see like this stuff right here, this stuff right here, the bike when it was dropped long, long ago, like years ago, uh, the bike was dropped, I plasti-dipped the uh, cover 
to hide the blemishes. You can only see it if you actually look closely and know what you're looking for. But we're gonna be removing the OEM stator cover. We're also gonna be removing this um, ignition, I think it's called the ignition cover. We're gonna be removing that and putting on some uh, Woodcraft ones that I've actually had for quite some time. So right here is the Woodcraft one. We were actually working with them as well. But for the longest time, I just didn't get around to it because I just didn't get around to it. So we have some, this is the ignition timing cover. We also have axle sliders and then rear and front axle sliders, Woodcraft ignition cover. And then right here we have the stator cover. We have the uh, driven block off place because we're actually gonna be also installing a Leo Vince or Leo Vince, we're Americans, so we're gonna say Leo Vince, full exhaust system. So you guys see this toast exhaust right here. This is actually toast. I don't 100% know if this is actually toast or if this is a knockoff because the person that I bought this from actually sold it to me for cheap. And usually it says toast right there. It actually does say toast. It actually does say toast. I plasti dipped the toast part off there because I didn't like it. But funny story is that the person that I got this toast exhaust from actually stole my credit card information and then bought a bunch of stuff. But I, I, nothing happened, I got the money back. But that's why it kind of makes me think that this isn't actually real toast. It's just a slip on, by the way. That is still the OEM cat, OEM headers. And that's the reason the Abbott stand is gonna come in key. If you guys can see under there, there's a lot of bolts that are very, very hard to get into to take the headers off. Um, having the Avistan is gonna be clutch because we could put the bike in a wheelie position. And then I have an angle adapter and all that stuff, but we're gonna be removing the headers, the cat, the slip-on exhaust, and then installing in the Leo Vince full exhaust system. Not sponsored, just the one that I wanted. The other thing that I worked on the bike, besides putting the new engine oil filter thingy that's on the other side of the bike, is the coolant. I actually filled up, I uh, did a full flush, took off all the old coolant out. Um, that's, this is, this one right here is the um, flushing thingy. You open this, the coolant comes out. It's so stupid because it, it shoots off right to the side. Other two bikes, the uh, Nimbus and Broly, I believe, both of them have their coolant that comes straight down. I don't know why it would come straight at you. So we're the stupidest design ever. Anyways, we are, that's the only thing that changed is I didn't remember to do it. I don't know why, like I just, I just wanted to work on the bike. That's empty. That's how empty this was, by the way. New coolant is in the bike, but we're gonna be taking out that coolant. It's new coolant, so I'll put it back in. But you guys see this hose right here, this hose right here, and there's like hoses here somewhere inside. Um, we're gonna be replacing all of those OEM hoses with Samco silicone hoses in white, custom white. So that's gonna take like a month or two for us to actually get. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be a little bit of a wait, but um, that's mostly gonna be a mod that we'll probably do at the very end of our build cycle for this one. Gold is our primary color. Black is just our, you know, neutral color that's on the bike, but our actual, actual secondary color on the bike is gonna be white. I'm gonna be removing these uh, wheel stickers and we'll get to be getting a wheel logo, wheel letters or rim tire letters or whatever, and that's gonna be in white. So I really wanted to get pink for the hoses, but they don't sell pink anymore. So we just got the white hoses. It's like an 11 piece kit. That's gonna make a big difference when it comes to cooling the bike, because the more hoses you replace, the more difference you'll feel the bike actually um, benefiting from you changing uh, all the hoses. I'm pretty sure for the, for the S1000, I think, for Ducati, I don't know, it's only a three piece, three piece kit, so you don't really see that big of a difference. Um, but we're also, with the ECU flash, the temperatures are gonna be better because the fan is gonna come on a lot faster. But if I do turn on the bike right now and it had like everything in it, uh, the fans usually turn on around 220 Fahrenheit. But with the ECU flash, they're gonna turn on like around 205 or 200. So fans turn on earlier, keeps the bike cooler. We're gonna have new coolant in there. We're gonna have new hoses in there. So the fluent, the coolant that's gonna be flowing through the bike is gonna be a lot more efficiently flowing through the bike. We're gonna have the new steel braided brake lines. Some brake pressure is gonna be um, a lot better. And watch this, this is the most hilarious thing ever. You see this? Get ready. You see that? Literally no pressure, no tension, no nothing. These are spongy as hell. So we're gonna be redraining the brake, uh, bleeding the brake system, uh, putting in new brake lines, pads, cleaning out the hoses. What else are we doing? 
Oh, okay, okay. So I'm trying to remember everything. So for the exhaust, this exhaust is not going to be there. We're going to save the OEM stuff, but this exhaust is going to come off. We're going to, we already have an air filter in there, a K and N air filter. We're going to take that out and clean it. We're also going to be taking the air box off and putting in block off plates um, for the D cell pops. So that's going to be great for the servo. We're going to be removing that down there. And then the ECU flash is going to remove any of the warnings for us. So that's uh, going to be one less thing we have to buy for it. These are the OEM bolts that I just took off. These are steel bolts. Let's see if I can take these out. Um, I've taken these fairings off so many times and I've put them on so many times that you can actually, if you took your bare hand and just went over this, you would feel how much the uh, bolt has been kind of like stripped. So you can still use it. It's just, it's not, not the greatest. So we are not gonna be using steel bolts anymore. Instead, we are gonna be using um, some titanium and some aluminum. Sadly, for fairing bolts, I couldn't get steel in gold color because I want gold bolts that'll just kind of like disguise themselves in the gold chrome wrap. So it's kind of sucks, but we're gonna be removing steel bolts, OEM, and we're gonna be using gold um, aluminum bolts instead. All the engine bolts, they're gonna be coming off and engine bolts are all uh, steel silver and we're gonna be getting titanium gold on there. Um, then this is for the gas tank. We're gonna be removing the aluminum uh, black bolts and replacing them with gold ones. And also, this current gas tank has a driven cap on there that's red. We're gonna be buying a gold one instead and putting the gold cap on there. So it's gonna be the gold, black base, gold driven gas cap with gold bolts. This right here is the oil filler cap. This is aluminum. We're gonna be swapping the plastic one. This one right here is plastic. This bolt is absolutely just horrendously garbage. And we're gonna be replacing this bolt with a gold aluminum one. Also, it comes with the uh, O-ring, so the airtight seal is still gonna be there. And then one of the coolest bolts that no one's ever gonna see, but we're gonna know about it and all know about it is, if you can zoom in, that right there is a titanium magnetic oil plug bolt so the oil plug so one second so deep under there not this bolt you guys see right there but like under here is the actual bolt the oil bolt that you remove to get the oil out of the system is not magnetic so when you take when you drain your oil it's cool to actually take off the bolt and look to see on the magnetic nub if there is any shards and stuff small i don't know what the right word is very small stuff you'll collect on your bike uh, if it has any sh uh, stuff inside the oil holder thingy. And the other two bikes, the uh, Roly and Nimbus, both have magnetic ones. So whenever I clean the oil, I can see if there's any issues, anything I need to look into. The R6 does not have that. So that titanium bolt that I just showed you actually has a little magnetic little nipple on the top. So next time we'll be changing, we'll be replacing, taking the old one off. The oil is on this bike anyways. We'll remove that, put the new one on there. The next time we do an oil change, we can actually look at it and see, is there any problem with the oil? Is there anything I need to look at? Any 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 warnings, uh, warning signs with, uh, before they actually happen? And another reason I haven't put in the oil into the bike is because we're gonna be removing the stator cover. When you remove the stator cover, which is gonna be really tough to remove because this is OEM and the bike's almost 10 years old. Um, when you remove this cover, some oil comes out. It's better to do it when there's no oil in there. So. That's another reason we have the oil out of the system, but once we replace the Woodcraft, the OEM one with the Woodcraft, we'll put the oil, new oil into the bike and we'll actually use that titanium bolt. The very last thing is when I drop the bike, funny thing is I've dropped the bike on both sides. The peg isn't supposed to be like that. There's supposed to be a little thing that pops up on the peg. This thing, when it fell, it broke off that side of the peg. Um, and this thing is sharp as hell. I can't tell you how many scars I have on my shins because of my foot grazing this and not when I'm in leathers, but like when I'm like coming to the bike and sitting on it in the garage, when I'm at home, like in shorts or something, and it'll just cut me and slice me open. And I can't tell you how many times it's cut me open in a place that it's already bleeding. So it's insane. So funny thing is I've dropped the bike on both sides and this side right here, it's gone. Same thing with this side right here, it's gone. So we are gonna be replacing the rear sets with actual attack performance custom rear sets that said that they were gonna be like goldish rose gold brown or bronze like that. But sadly they don't look like that, but we're just gonna go for it. They're, they're gonna be amazing. They're one of the best rear sets you can get for the R6. I, I kinda wish I got black because black would have looked cooler besides the color they sent me. But the, cus the color that they got me is custom and it was made to order, so I can't even refund it. But I've had it for a while. 
we're gonna be removing these and then putting in, cause you know how many times I've rode, uh, I've ridden this bike and I've told you guys that I've been riding and like foot positioning is so difficult. Cause this bike is really small for me compared to Broly and Nimbus. I feel like this is the smallest bike when I sit on it. Then is Nimbus and then Broly is the biggest one where I actually feel like I'm sitting on a big bike. With this bike, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm just, I'm, I, even though I'm perched up like a gargoyle on it, it's not as comfy to me as it could be because of like my thighs and like just my whole bottom half. It's just with lifting and stuff. It's just, I needed to be custom. I needed to be not OEM because I know in OEM it's tough for them to get every size perfect for everyone. So instead we're going to be removing this right here and we're going to be putting on some custom attack rear sets that are actually, you can see the box right there. Uh, the chain is gonna be lubed and clean. I do wanna replace the chain and the whole sprocket kit, but we're not gonna be doing that now because I'm already doing so many performance mods. And when we do change the chain and the sprocket and the whole chain adjuster, everything like that, we're gonna be changing that. Um, putting some carbon covers on here and stuff too. I wanted to gear it towards acceleration more because I don't care about top speed on R6. It's, just, it's never gonna be what these uh, two other bikes are gonna be. You can never match that. So there's no point in going for top speed. I want acceleration more than anything. I will have to reflash the ECU to get the speedometer correct, but I'd rather reflash it later and do the sprocket stuff later. And right now, just do the full exhaust system with the block off plates, with the ECU flashed, uh, with the new air filter cleaned, and the translogic system with stainless steel braided brake lines, new brake fluid, new brake pads, and clean brake calipers. I'd rather have fun with that. And then later on do like in a couple of months, do the uh, chain and sprocket conversion kit thingy, new sprockets, new carriers, all that stuff, new bolts, titanium bolts. If any bolts that I'm taking off the bike are like onto the engine, I'll get titanium. But if the bike is like fairing bolts, then I think getting titanium is useless. So we'll just get gold aluminum ones, call it a day. The rear passenger packs, I'm still thinking if we need to replace those, but probably not. We got a little tank cover sitting there, carbon tank cover for the for the V4 for Broly. We'll be removing those reflectors as well because nobody needs those. I don't drive at night anyways. All right, I think that is it. I went through everything that I could remember. And again, I apologize for the shakiness and the super zoomed in footage. I'm standing as far back as I possibly can in the hyperbolic time chamber, but uh, we'll get the correct lens. Also, I want to mention that we're going to be creating build episodes in shorts. All right, we're not going to be doing full long form. Instead, I am going to be creating a short form for the build episode, showing you the highlights and then keeping it nice and simple. Um, so we might have to like record in like portrait mode or something like that. It'd look kind of cool to do that. So a lot, a lot of changes. I'm not a big fan of doing multiple changes on the bike altogether, but it is what it is. I've waited so long. Those parts have been sitting on that rack, taking up space for almost two years now. So I think enough is enough. Let's um, finish all the stuff on this bike. And then I think the next one we're gonna be working on is probably gonna be the V4 because we have that tank cover sitting right there looking pretty. And there's, a, there's for the for, for Broly, is gonna be a fun build project because there's so many mods you can do to it. The main thing is I do wanna finish all the work on the R6 because that's the first bike that we ever had. That's the first bike that deserves the love. And that's the bike that I feel like I've neglected out of all of them. So it's gonna be a fun build series. I just wanted to make a quick update video to show you exactly right now at this moment what's happening, what's going on, what mods do we have in plan. But there's gonna be so many things like removing the exhaust, the rear sets, the Samco hoses, the steel braided brake lines, messing around, organizing and tweaking the uh, auto blipper quick shifter. All that stuff is new to me. I've never done those things. So it's gonna be a new experience for me to learn. But anyways, that's all the updates that we have from the uh, hyperbolic time chamber. We'll make separate videos for Broly. We'll make a separate video for the S1000, tell you guys what's going on with those bikes. I'm gonna hurry up and edit this video and send it out and then finally start working on clearing out that rack and putting in all the mods onto the R6 and then moving on to these bikes. So thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I'm out, peace.